I'm doing a series of videos on Old English pronunciation. And it's important to start off with two reminders. Number one, I'm not a linguist. Number two, when I say this is how Old English sounds, I'm really saying this is approximately how the phonology of Old English works. Old English had different accents, almost certainly, and there are probably differences between those that have been lost to time. So we just lump all the all the pronunciations that are spelled the same across all the dialects together create this one-size-fits-all pronunciation which probably nobody in Anglo-Saxon England spoke exactly like, but which all Old English speakers spoke something close to. It's a bit like how if you look in the dictionary and look at how the word room is pronounced, it'll tell you according to the IPA that it's pronounced room, which I don't know anybody who says room. I know plenty of people say room, plenty of people say room, plenty of people say room, but not room, but room is close enough to all these and so we just accept it. And we can recover the more noticeable dialectal differences in Old English based on the spelling. Like how West Saxon writes heron, and Anglian writes heron, for instance. Now, that being said, the early West Saxon dialect, which is what I usually aim to speak, had seven monophthongs, which means simple vowels, and three diphthongs, which means two vowels acting as one syllable. So, in addition to these ten qualities, the seven monophthongs, three diphthongs, you could have short and long versions of all ten. So, that brings the total number of distinctive vowels up to twenty. Now, that might sound like a lot, but it really isn't all that bad. English has twenty-four. The seven monophthongs in Old English can be split further into four front vowels and three back vowels. I'm going to say each vowel short and then long. Notice that the quality does not change. The long version is the same as the short version held longer. Ah, 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 eh, 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 e, 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 e. O, 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 U, 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 U. The diphthongs are just combinations of monophthongs that were just explained above, and there's only three of them: E, A, and E. That that last one, we're not entirely certain of how it's pronounced, so you can just say it how it's spelled, say E, and make things a little easier on yourself. There's arguments for both e and e. Like the monophthongs, there are short and long diphthongs. So, o and eo, a and a, and e and e, or e and e. Now, go back and listen to those sounds. Try and repeat them. Imitate what I said. Don't listen to the approximations. They're approximations. And remember, especially if you're an English speaker, not to let the monophthongs become diphthongs. Don't turn a into a. Don't turn o into o. E into E, O into O, or anything like that. Now I'm gonna say some words going through each of the vowels. Man, hopan, ark, tarken, asha, raven, flash, dad, bed, helpan, ye, metan, thing, mid, ease, mean, good, moon, doom, flood, under, full, mooth, Fool, Kuning, Uvel, Lütel, Kuth, Orde, Brocht, Freu, Frozen, Child, Worth, Grat, Dram, Jevan, Ild, Heran, Freist. You can repeat these words to practice pronouncing your vowels. In the next video, I'm going to go over the consonant sounds. The third video will be about how the Old English spelling works. And remember, do as I say, not as I do. In videos where I read texts, I might not say everything 100% right. I'm learning too. That'll be all for now. Thank you for watching. This has been English Bidadwina.